Okay guys, it's 3.30 in the morning and I'm in the shop, wow. And it's not from a long night, it's the first one. So, I couldn't sleep as usual, but time has come to uh, measure for axle shafts. I'm, I've decided to go with Brannick. Uh, spoke with uh, Stan is the owner, great guy. If you have any questions, highly recommend reaching out to uh, Brannick. Um, he, uh, he really knows his stuff. So I've got a measure for shafts and that's what I'm doing out here. I've been thinking about it, so it was bothering me. I don't know if you do that, but I do. So I decided to come out here 3.30 in the morning before work and uh, get a little measuring done. Okay, problem number one, figure out what kind of axle seal I'm gonna use. So I thought I figured it out. I bought the, uh, what are these? From Crane Axle, the Rev 14. It uses, it replaces the spanner nuts. Let me show you. It replaces the spanner nuts with these little doohickeys. And you use a Dana 60 uh, axle seal. Pretty good idea. I think that's one and nine sixteenths diameter somewhere right around in there. To do that though, I got this off the RCV site. I need to figure out this ceiling surface, right? And so on a 14 bolt shaft, it's one and a half inches. And I'm gonna use the uh, one and a half inch shaft with 30 splines that go into uh, the uh, carrier. So I gotta figure out this raised section here. So problem with that is I cut these axle tubes so that I could use the same inner shaft on either side. Why? Because I wanna carry one spare shaft that I could sling in either side. So if I, if I use this axle seal, then I can't do that because that ceiling surface, let me show you the carrier. So the ceiling surface, it's shorter on this side of the carrier than on this side of the carrier. So that puts that ceiling surface at like three inches on one side and five inches on the other. And I called Brannick to see if we could lengthen it and do it the same on, on both. And I guess that's not possible. So what do I do now? I'm gonna use something called seals it and it's a tube seal that you uh, can place inboard uh, just behind those spanners. Uh, silicone, uh, silicone seal it in there, press it in there. And uh, I think a lot of people use that. It's typically used on um, a nine inch axle that's turned into a steering axle. So uh, it should work for me. So I think that's the way I'm gonna do, uh, do the uh, axle seal and hopefully that's gonna work. So, if you're in the market for these Rev 14s, I got a couple for you. Okay, by no means am I a 14 bolt axle expert at all, but I can use Google. And so, when I Google the, um, the tube diameter for a 14 bolt, everybody comes back and says it's, uh, what was it, three and a half inches, then I found three and three eighths, mine is three and three eighths. So this is a piece that I cut off, and so it is three and three eighths inches uh, in diameter. So that's one important thing to know because I need to figure out the axle seal diameter. And so I've measured this with my calipers and it's just not matching anything I found through Google search. Everybody says that it's half inch. Um, then I see three eighths inches. Well, mine's not. 
Mine is, uh, let me turn my calipers on. Mine is, if you can see that, 5 sixteenths. Or 0.3125. Times two, uh, that makes this inner diameter 2.75 inches. So I don't know, do you guys, anybody have any experience with the 14 bolt and the wall thickness of the tubes? Mine's 5 sixteenths. I've measured about 100 times so far. What, what are yours, what have you seen? I, I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna try the two and three quarter inch seals it, um, tube, tube seals. And we'll see if that works out. So I got to get those things on order today. It'll give me something to do. Okay, so now we have, I've got a, at least somewhat of a game plan to seal up these axle tubes. Um, that's going to allow me, using that seals it, is going to allow me to uh, use the same inner shaft on both sides so I could carry one spare. That's important to me. I like to carry spare axle shafts. I'm going with chromoly, just a standard chromoly shaft from Brannock with the Brannock U-joints. Um, and yeah, I think that's going to work out. I've got uh, spares from, for my front axle. I'd like to have a spare for the rear. Um, I typically keep it in my trailer. I don't carry it in the, in the buggy. But having it is just, I don't know, it's insurance for me. So got the tube seal figured out. I think I could still do one spare axle shaft. Now I got to figure out how to measure uh, for, the, for the shaft. So to do that, I'm going to have to put the carrier back in. So let me get this carrier thrown back in there. I'm not installing it. I'm just setting it in there for measuring purposes. So, I need to measure for the axle shaft, and to do that, I need to bottom out my tape measure in the carrier. Um, so let me go find my tape measure that'll fit in there. And the measure needs to be from basically the pin, which, is it in there? Yeah. It basically needs to be from the pin out to the center line of the uh, inner C. So I saw this on, what was it, uh, Desert Dog? Chris, he did a steering axle and I saw how he measured. I thought that was a pretty good idea. So I got my little magnetic getter tool and I'm going to run... I'm going to run my tape measure through the spindle. I don't guess it's imperative that that was at zero degrees, but uh, I did it anyway. And we will measure to the center of that little device. And that should give us our uh, inner shaft length. Says back it off about a quarter inch, so 20 that's 26 inches.
And that is 26. It's bottomed out is, let's see, and three, call it 26 and a, and it's 26 and three sixteenths. Okay, so I've measured this about a zillion times and I get the same measurement. So one side is 26 inches, the other side is 26 and 3 sixteenths. So we don't want the shafts actually touching uh, or bottoming out, so you can back them off just a hair. So I think, and, and uh, when I talked to the guys at Brannock, they said back it off a quarter inch. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'll somehow split the difference and maybe make it, I don't know, 25 and 13 sixteenths? No, 15 sixteenths? Something thereabouts? I don't know. I'll get with the guys at Brannick when I order it and, uh, and see what that looks like, so. What they did say I could do is instead of cutting two, two inch splines, they could give me three inch splines and I could just cut it, cut it down. So that, that would work too. Um, so I don't know, we'll, we'll see what that looks like. So I got my inner shaft um, length. I've got the tube seals figured out. Now I just need to get parts on order. And so that's what I'm gonna do today. Today is the day I'm putting Raggedy Red in position to tear the rear axle out of her. So stick around, stay tuned. Let's see what we can get done today. Yeah, so it's time to clean up Raggedy Red before I get her get her in position to rip the axle out. So look at this thing, it's filthy. I don't know where y'all live, but man, do you see the yellow tint? It's pollen. Oh man. It's terrible. Alright guys, hopefully you can see me. There's no light under here. I'm under the buggy. And let me turn you around and I'll show you what I'm looking at here. So, uh, the, the skid plate, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is taking this brace out. Uh, and I've gotta do a cross member that goes from frame rail to frame rail. And I wanna take a measurement from the edge of the skid plate and mark it on the frame because I believe that is where I'm gonna mount my rear cross member right at the trailing edge of the skid plate. So before I pull all this apart, I'd like to uh, get that measurement down. So we'll do that and then get the axle pulled out. Thing has seen better days, hasn't it? Okay, we're getting close. So I got the brake lines disconnected. I got the drive shaft taken out, which was actually kind of a chore. I have got all the link bars loosened, bolts are still in, and I've got the struts, the, the bolts that hold the struts to the axles, I've got those loose and the nuts off. So um, I also, uh, released all the nitrogen and it is sitting at full bump. So I don't know if you could see this. This has always bothered me. Let me go to the other side, but you could, it sits a lot lower in the back than it does the, the front. 
So I've got 14 inch struts front and rear. Is it worth the money to go ahead and replace the rear with 16 inch struts? Knowing that I'm gonna move the mounting, the mounting bracket, this where it's mounted on the drag axle, where it's gonna be mounted on the steering axle is gonna be moved in a little bit, which should raise it up slightly. Also, the brackets I bought are from Motobuilt and they are probably three quarters of an inch taller than these. So I'll gain a little bit of height and I think I could almost get it leveled out. I don't know. It's always bothered me because I've got more shaft showing in the back than the front to keep the car level. And I, I don't really care for that. So I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. It kind of bugs me, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing up on jack stands. Everything's at full stuff, and uh, we'll see if we can get this axle out.